So happy feast day, feast of dedication to the altar, which we learned last week. That while most of the world thinks it's Jesus' birthday, we know how to worship him. We know that it's not. And we now know that what they were doing on the 25th of the cold months was at the, well, the Feast of Dedication is just celebrating, again, um, the rededicating of the temple. Now they went in there and put the false idols up in the temple and totally desecrated the temple um, back in those times, in the uh, Maccabean time. A lot, of, if, a lot of people who are in the truth today that don't accept the Apocrypha as being a part of the 1611 Bible is not even thinking about this day and this celebration. So they're missing out. But we know we follow Christ, and so Christ kept the Feast of Dedication, which is John 10 and 22, where you can see that Yahweh Shai, Jesus the Christ, had done so. So we learned that last week, and that's why we're joined together. Thank you to Monique and Ronald for again opening up your home, allowing us to have this feast together. Next week it'll be over at... Uh, me and Nicole's house, me and my wife's house. And um, as you know, this is an eight-day feast. So if you can take the time this week in your busy schedules to try to cut out some of what you normally do and try to get into the scriptures each day, you'll see how the Most High will open your, your insight. He's the one, Christ is the one who opens the scriptures for us. So even if you're going through old lessons or whatever, remember that this is a holy week and we're thinking about Again, the dedication of the altar, it was dedicated back to the Most High and what that was all about. And if you've been following me for a couple years now, well, a year and a half now, um, at this time of year, because these so-called holidays um, gener uh, center around family, what I try to do around this season is to reinforce us through the scriptures on marriage and how the family is supposed to operate through the scriptures. So society has given us a way of how we're supposed to operate, but there's a way through the scriptures so that we can teach our children how they're supposed to operate their families, et cetera. And so that... Um, we can we can be found blameless when the Most High returns, His Son returns. So we're going to talk about join together through the Scriptures. If you know that Scripture, it says, "What the Most High has joined together, let no one pull us under." All righty. So let's start, Uncle Cliff, Proverbs ten and thirteen. Thirteen and ten. Thirteen and ten. Thirteen and ten. Proverbs 13 and 10. Only by pride cometh contention, but with well advised is wisdom. Right. So when we have situations in our marriages and in any relationship, when we're unable to get along and see eye to eye, especially those Israel who know who they are and how we're supposed to live our lives, there, there's probably an element of pride. Read that first part again. In, in chapter in verse 10, because um, y'all was going too fast for me. Only by pride cometh contention. Only by pride brings this contention. Then what's the rest? But with well advised is wisdom. With well advised is wisdom. So where do we think we should get our wisdom wisdom from? Right. What is our wisdom? What's that? What's that scripture? Foundational scripture. There's several of them. The one we harp on a lot. 111.10. What's 111.10 say? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay. And all that? A good understanding of all that do his commandments. So that's how we get our understanding of how to do this. I was actually thinking of Deuteronomy 4 and 6. This is how we show our wisdom in the mm -hmm. earth. But that's actually an excellent scripture. Because we got to go to the Most High. And if we don't, if both parties in marriage don't fear the Lord, then that's where you're going to find this contention. It's going to brew pride. Alrighty, let's go with Isaac. 
with uh, Proverbs 19 and 21. Proverbs 19 and verse 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall that the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Right. There are many devices. There's many ways that we think we know how to run our families. We know how to operate in marriage. We we all got our ideas. Society gave us an idea in most cases. That's why they're giving us other ideas of that you can have two of the same sex. Uh, coming together in marriage. Well, as you know, the, the scriptures, you know that that's not of the most high. That is an abomination. Thank you. So it says, there are many devices of a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. So if we want our marriages to stand and we want to have a prosperous family, what should we be standing on? That's right. He should counsel us about our marriages and how they should work. Right? So if we if we know where the class has shifted in the last six months or so, we've been making an emphasis on what? Who should we listen to? Hear ye him. Hear ye him. That's what the most high came down and told us to do. So we're gonna see what Christ has to say about all of this. Let's go over to Deuteronomy just to fill in the blanks, eighteen and fifteen, and we're on Jason. Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, that unto me, but to them ye shall hearken. All right, Deuteronomy 18 and 15. So he's telling Moses that he's going to raise up a who? A prophet. And what did we learn? Thank you. What did you say it again? Big P. Capital P. So he's telling them that this is going to be the head prophet. There's a lot of prophets that's going to come between Moses and before we get to Christ. But it says he will raise up up unto thee a prophet from in the midst of thee of thy brethren. So he's going to be like us, look like us. A lot of fallacies in the, uh, in the earth. We was watching this Muppet video and it's centered around Christmas and all the Muppets were white. And then they took the Muppet to Egypt. And the dude that was singing, the Muppet that was singing in Egypt was black. Now, if you know your Bible, he took Christ to Egypt for what? Oh, right. So how is this little white baby going to hide amongst all of these black people in Egypt? Right? So, yeah, it would have to be a miracle. Um, but he says, uh, that would be like thy brother, like unto me, and him ye shall hearken. This is who we shall listen to. But what what were some of the characteristics of Moses? He was a Hebrew. Okay. So he had to be Christ. This this Christ had to be a Hebrew. That's a good answer. What else? What were some of his attributes? He, the law. he gave us the law. So Christ would contend with the law. He wouldn't come and do away with it. But he was a deliverer. Yeah. Right? Uh, he was an intercessor, right? So he was like unto what Moses was because we'll probably read, but when they went to go get the laws from the Most High, they couldn't stand to hear from him. So he had to have someone in between us that can hear from, from the Most High, translated to us as his, as his people. Let's go over to X. We're back at you, Cousin Ronald. You're going to go from cousin to uncle for the rest of my life. <laughs> All right. X7. X7. Let me get down there. Go ahead. This, excuse me, this Moses, whom they refused, saying, 
Who made he a ruler and a judge? Now, he was a ruler and a judge. Is Christ our ruler? Yeah. And was all judgment given to him? Yeah. Right? But did they also refuse Christ, his own people? Yes. Right. So we see some characteristics that look alike. Go ahead. The same did God send to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel which, which appeared to him in the bush. Thirty-six. Mm -hmm. He brought them out. After that, he has showed has shewed, shewed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness for forty years. And then people still didn't believe. We can go show the people today what Christ really says, and everybody loves Jesus, right? We can go show them that he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you are my friend, do as I command. We can go show them that. If you can continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. We can show them all of that. But they're going to say, not my Jesus. Right? So Moses had the same problems. But a lot of people, and, and just for your knowledge, they think when in Deuteronomy, when Moses is talking about uh, he's going to raise up a prophet, they thinking it's the prophet Muhammad. Some messianics that don't believe in Christ believes that he's talking about Joshua. And that's what these next set of scriptures is going to prove us. Let's go over to Deuteronomy. Oh, 37. I'm sorry. 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, and prophet shall, shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. Like unto me, him shall ye hear. Now, here's Peter saying the same thing. So they knew, Moses knew of Christ's coming and of his resurrection as we get deeper in the scripture. But everybody knew that every, this was talking about Christ, those that are in the scriptures, as we do now. Now let's go over to Deuteronomy 34. So didn't that say the same thing that Deuteronomy said? So how can they say that Old Testament is done away with? They don't read no parts of the Old Testament. They think it's been done away with and they're saying the same thing. Deuteronomy 34, and I'm there with you. Go ahead. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Right. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. So was this talking about Joshua? No. Yeah. For those that don't believe on Christ, this is not talking about, he's not that prophet. There was none like Moses up until Christ came, according to the scriptures. Alrighty, um, Isaac, go back to 18. Deuteronomy 18, and we want verses 15 through 19. The Lord thy God will raise up until thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Mm -hmm. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more. So they needed a what? That I were. They didn't want to, right, they needed an intercessor because they couldn't stand to hear. They feared him when they went to go get these commandments on Horeb or Mount Sinai. Go ahead. That I got not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So what is Jesus going to be speaking? Everything his Father commands him. Exactly. So even when it looks like he's so-called changing things, who did he get his words from? His Father. His Father. So when we look at things, and I'm not going to dip into this lesson, but when we talk about adultery, right, 
And then Christ says, but I say to you, even if you look upon a woman with lust, you have committed adultery in your heart. So he, he, he upheld the law of adultery, and he told you how you get into it. And told you you were still as guilty as committing, right? This is the this, he's the Lord of the Sabbath. He's our Lord and Savior. This is that same uh, the Most High made him both Lord and Christ, right? Are we done there? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I think we got 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, who shall not listen unto his words, what will happen? Go ahead. Which he shall speak, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. He will require it of him. Now, here in America, with that nice and English, we think you know, no big deal. But if you're going before the Most High and He's going to require it of you, there's a there's a sincere problem. And not only that, if you don't listen to Christ, you're not going to make it on the good side of the kingdom, no way. You're going to be on the outside looking in from the bubbling lava pit. Now let's go back to Acts and see what the apostle said. Chapter 3, and we want verses 22 and 23, Jason. For Moses truly said unto the Father, A prophet shall the Lord and God raise up the beard of your brethren. Like unto me, and shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Did he say in some things? Did he say the things that we don't agree with? We need to hear Christ in all things. That's why we're going to see what happens when it deals with this marriage situation. There's something that Christ is going to add to the same way he did with that adultery thing. But he said, we need to hear him in all things. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that every soul which not hear, hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Now is that plain? Because I jumped ahead of myself again. If we don't hear that prophet that he's raising up, he's going to be what? That's what that required of him means. He's going to destroy them. So if they don't believe in Christ, don't believe the words of Christ. It's okay. Why are you still breathing on this earth? But in the last day, when he comes back, that every eye will see, he's going to require it. He's going to destroy some people that didn't believe. That scripture, it says, which will not hear that prophet. Meaning that people who have chosen not to hear. Yeah. You say something to them, and they choose not to hear that what the prophet is saying. They stiff neck. They still going to do what they want to do. No matter what they, like you said, they love Jesus, right? right. But they not willing to listen to nothing he say. These are those people that will be destroyed. And it's, it's, it's not a happy thing. It's, it's kind of sad and pitiful. Because yeah. if you know your scriptures, only one third of Israel will be saved. And it's not the majority. It says that narrow road, few will find it, right? right. Who are we on? Uh, Ronald? John 12? John 12, 48 through 50. <laughs> He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, and one that judgeth him. The word, the, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Right, that's when it's going to happen. So if you don't want to listen now, those same words you're going to be judged by. Go ahead. 20, 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which is sent me. He gave me a commandment that I should say and what I should speak. And that's what it said over in Deuteronomy, right? right. He was going to put his words in his mouth. And he's going to tell him what to say mm -hmm. and what he should speak. He commanded him to say certain things. Right? Mm -hmm. 50? 50. And I know that 
This commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. And that's case, that's 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 a clear case right there. Yeah. He's he, he's only speaking what he, he um, what his father instructed him to speak. So it's not really nothing has changed. He's probably doing some more putting it in layman's terms so that we can understand. Hey, if you're looking at that woman in lust like David did, looking at Bathsheba, he ended up in adultery. He ended up bearing a kid. Ended up, uh, that first kid ended up dying. We think Solomon was so cool, but Solomon went through that same Bathsheba. And yeah, he started out good, but then he lost his mind along the way. Yeah. Not listening to the word of the Most High. So if our marriages and our families are going to stand, we have to listen to the word of this prophet. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And do it his way. Matthew, somebody got lucky. One verse, 5 and 31. Who are we on, Cliff? Matthew 5 and uh, verse 31. It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writ a writing of divorce. Right. So the law says what you're getting into right right next. Matter of fact, well, uh, Cliff, just continue reading. Um, Did you know that was been said? Yes. Well, not the next scripture. And they're amazing. What the VA loan? You have mortgages. You can buy a home with them. Long, brother. Thirty-two, right? No, go to Deuteronomy um, twenty-four. <laughs> well, somebody just came in. Hmm? Deuteronomy 24. <laughs> starting at verse 1. Let me get there. <laughs> All right, Deuteronomy 24. And let's get this law and divorce. Start in verse 1. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he has found some uncleanliness in her, let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give her to her hand, and send her out of his house. So he's getting rid of her. He even found something he don't like about her. Two deuces. See you later. <laughs> right? It says uncleanness. Well, that's another lesson, but go ahead. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. So once you give her that bill of divorcement, she can go be somebody else's wife. Right? Go ahead. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send it her out of his house, or if the latter husband dies, which took her to be his wife, mm -hmm. her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be oh. his wife. After that, she is defiled. For that is an abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So if you divorce her, and she go off and marry somebody else, and then that husband dies or he gets rid of her, the law says it's an abomination for you to go back to that former wife. How many times have we seen that in society? People going back to the, to the first wife. And, you know, it, it might look lovely to the world, but the most I put that up there with homosexuality. It's an abomination. And all the other abominations that we have learned. Right? So that was the law of the divorce. Now let's go over to Sirach. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocryphal. Ecclesiasticus 25. And you got yours? Okay. 25 and verse 24 through 26. Of the woman who came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Now, I know this is a tough pill to swallow, but did did where did sin how did sin get into the world? What was her name? Thank you. 
three. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Even seen. Go ahead. Yeah, you know you're gonna have to. I don't know. Either a wicked woman liberty to get aboard a bride. Which I'm sorry, where are you at? Which verse? Twenty five. Okay. All right, give Okay, so give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to gad abroad. So when there's trouble in the place, like if you have a water leak in your house, what are you going to do? What's the first thing you're going to do? Turn off the water. Right, even if you have it in the pipes, you're going to stop the leak somehow, right? Whether it's in the roof, whether it's in the pipe, but you're going to cut out because water, it causes a lot of damage. If it goes unattended, right? right? It turns into dry rot and mold, and and then it's just a, a terrible situation. Yeah. So if you're going to rule your house the way Christ is telling us to, husband, you have to cut that off. Did Adam cut it off, or did he participate? Right? Yeah, he's a follower. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> 26 If she go not as thou wouldest have her Cut her off from thy flesh And give her a bill of divorce And let her go And let her go Now We learned about the uh, the law of divorce in 24 They're reemphasizing it here in Ecclesiasticus So several prophets later Books later right Who's not on the scene Who's not on the scene? Yes. Christ? Thank you. Because that's where the difference is going to come in. They've been going through the law of divorce. These men hated their wives for whatever reasons. It wasn't all just because she was unclean or she was not righteous, walking in righteousness. They just found a reason to get rid of her and gave her that bill of divorce. Like, here you go. See you later. Peace. <laughs> Because marriage was what? Meant to be what? Forever. Forever. Marriage was meant to be forever. So they thinking like, okay, well, if the law says I can't get rid of her, I'm just going to go throw her in a ditch somewhere. And so he suffered them. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go to the next set of scriptures. Matthew, back to Matthew. Who are we on? Jason? Matthew 5, and we're going to verses 31 through 32. It has been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorce. Say that first statement to the comma. To the comma. Verse 32. Let him give her a writing of divorce. Verse 32. This is where it changes. Who's speaking? Right. Right. But but I say unto you. Go ahead. That whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication. But whoever so shall put his wife away except for fornication, which is a sin, which is what is fornication? Jeez. So if your wife goes off and, and and sleeps with another man. He said, except for that case. Go ahead. Causes her to commit adultery. He causes it causes her to commit adultery. Go ahead. And whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce cometh uh, committed adultery. Committed of adul adultery. So Christ put a lot in there. You know, she has to, she has to, or, or even he, has to commit a fornication. And if you, if you don't, if you just go off and treat, cheat with somebody, you cause that person to be in adultery. You're in adultery yourself. This is what Christ is bringing to the table and to our understanding. So unless it's for those reasons, you, you find yourself in adultery. Um, who are we on, Ronald? Yeah, what verse? Chapter 18. Chapter 
Matthew 18. Yes, let's break this down. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? Right, so Peter had a cutoff. So he going through his mind, oh, he done, he done, he done, he done made me angry once. Oh, she done did it again. We got up to two today. I can't believe that came out of that Hebrew's mouth. And y'all use another one. That's three. This old low, down, dirty. We up to four. So Peter got this cut off. So it would be up to seven times before I can be like, nay. What does Jesus say? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Oh, man. Seventy times seven. And we're talking about in one day. So how many times is that? Who knows they math? 490. 490 times in one day, Monique. What does that mean? Demond. Lolita. Lolita. Chelsea. Friendships. Grizzly. 490 oh. times in one day. All you women. I said because it starts with me. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Therefore, in the kingdom of heaven, like unto a certain king, which would take account of his servant. Mm -hmm. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which which owed him ten thousand talents. Right. Go ahead. But for as much as he had not to pay, his lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had. And payment to be made. Right. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, "Lord, have I, Lord, have patience with me." So, if a person has a seven, a seven offense uh, cut off, does he really have patience? Because that's actually easy to do, seven times. But if you're gonna forgive somebody seventy times seven, you got to have a lot of patience, which is another word for what. Long, long suffering. We have to be long suffering even in our marriages because our marriages, people can see our faults. The person on the streets can't see your faults. If you have a close friendship, they can see your faults. So you got to be able to see that. Go ahead. Finishing up on 26. And I will pay thee all. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 27. To the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. The debt. So the Lord forgave him, right? He had compassion. He had patience with him. Like, okay, you don't have to sell all your, your possessions. I'm going to give you more time. Go ahead. 28. But the same servant went out and found him and found one of, one of his fellow servants. Which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Now, did he show attributes of the Most High? Not at all. He, matter of fact, went and did the off, uh, uh, opposite. Go ahead. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him. Just like he did with the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Saying, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Mm -hmm. 30, And he would not, but went, went and cast him into prison till he should pay for that. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very, very, they were very sorry, and came and told, told unto, their, unto their Lord that all was done. Mm -hmm. Then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said, and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that death, because thou desirest me. Now see, this is how we are in life. We want people to let, bow down and do what they need to do towards us, and have no pity and have no patience, no long suffering with them. But then we turn around and go ask the Most High to forgive us of our sins. But we got this seven, seven limit cut off with, our, with the people we know and love. Right? 
Don't that, don't that seem kind of backwards? We got to show mercy if we want the most high to show us mercy. Right? Go ahead. Uh, 33. Shouldst not thou also have had, have had compassion on thy, on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? All right. And his Lord was was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that we do unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespass. So do we need to forgive? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. No matter the issue. We got to keep forgiving. Because marriage, again, we're going we're gonna to get into this in a second, but it's supposed to be forever. So how much forgiving and how much patience, how much long-suffering, how much compassion are we going to have to have with one another? Lots. Decades. Mm -hmm. Centuries worth, right? Because mm. it's supposed to be forever. And if we don't do it that way, then that's when that divorce word comes in. That's when we're trying to get rid of like the Pharisees. Can we get rid of rid of her for any old reason? <laughs> then we'd be out of order. Exactly. And don't care. Uh, Matthew 19. Matthew 19, starting at verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these things, he departed from Galilee and came to the coast of Judea, beyond Jordan. Mm -hmm. And the great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Now here's the Pharisees, Hebrews, wearing their fringes, head wraps. They knew the law, right? They, well, at least their wives had their head wraps, wearing skirts, whatever. But they knew the law. They had the scriptures. And they come back to them. They knew Deuteronomy, what Deuteronomy 24 said. They even knew what Sirach 25 said. But they come tempting Christ. They didn't believe him, just like they didn't believe Moses. Here we go with these similar attributes. Right? Go ahead. Four. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. So, I mean, I know it's on the paper. Where are we going next? He said in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So what did he do in the beginning? Yes, Let's go find it out. First book. And we're on Isaac. This is one. <laughs> One and twenty-seven and twenty-eight. So, haven't you heard this from the beginning? Christ says He made them both male and female. Go ahead, read this creation. So God created man in His own image, and in the image of God created He him. Male and female created He them. So, why would He be making them male and female? What would that purpose be? Companionship. Companionship. What'd you say? Procreation. Procreation, right? Which both goes together, but what's that word for that? Multiplication. Well, you're going to come together for a companion. You're going to create multiplication, but what is that called? Amen. What are we talking about today? Marriage. Marriage. This is what he created them both for. This is the marriage. Go ahead. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. There we go. He, brought, he made both male and female, and he blessed them and told them to be fruitful and multiply. Go have kids and do what else? And replenish the earth and subdue it. And have domain over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of, of the air and over every living thing that moveth move upon the earth. And he gave us dominion over everything. And he created people here, both male and female. He did something a little bit different with Adam. He gave him a commandment. Same thing with Israel. He gave us commandments of how to live our lives. So we had people in the earth because people always wonder, well, if it was only four people on the earth, how did Cain come back with a wife? 
These people were created here. The other nations were created here. Let's go over to Deuteronomy, two, I'm sorry, Genesis 2 in one verse. Stay there, Isaac. You read it. Verse 24. Verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So, if you cleave, that's, that's two, right? Coming together, and they do what? They cleave, right? They become one. So, you become a direct representation of one another. You shouldn't have so-called like a Muslim and a Christian living in the same house. That's not two flesh. They might come together physically, and make one flesh, but they're going to have all kind of different difference of opinion of how to raise the kids, how the family mm -hmm. should operate, how the marriage should run, because they're not in agreement with what Christ says. So he says, therefore, shall a man leave his mother and father. We don't need to bring those ideas in, uh, ideologies into the equation. you got to make up, well, come together with your own. And... He gives us the scripture so we'll know how to do it. Now, if our parents had known the truth, for those that didn't, he said to do what? Train your child in, in the way he should go. And when you get older, he would not depart from you. So everything would be working together the way it's supposed to according to the scripture. Let's go over to Matthew, back to Matthew, chapter 19. Are we on you, Jason? The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, It is lawful for a man to put away his wife for every kind. And what reason did he give us the way to put away their wives? Fornication. Fornication. Right, go ahead. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that which he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Mm -hmm. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. So Christ is speaking what? The word, right? All the way from the beginning. He's not changing words here. Go ahead. Wherefore they are no more twine, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, that not man put asunder. So this is what Christ said. If y'all have come together in matrimony, if we've come together in matrimony, man, me and her, and whomever you go marry, Jason, Isaac, we're not supposed to let nobody tear that apart. Not even us. Irreconcilable differences. That doesn't come from the scriptures. Right? Well, we just can't get it. I'm good on such and such. <laughs> I promise you, he got to 490 dead times in one day. He said, let no man put us under. Right? Because it's meant to be forever. Let's go over to Matt Mark, sorry. Uh, Uncle Cliff. Mark chapter 10, and we're going to start in verse 10. And in the house of his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. So can the woman put away the uh, uh, man and be um, not guilty, so to speak, of adultery? No. So neither party can do this. Mark just clears it up a little bit. But the disciples, just to point this out, they didn't come tempting Christ. They just wanted some clarity. And that's what we should be looking for in this word. We're not coming to test the scriptures. We believe the scriptures are true. We just want our understanding open so we'll know how to conduct our lives. So when a person has an evil spirit, we can say to them, um, excuse me, honey. That that doesn't that's not a spirit of the most high. That's that's not how he's saying that we should operate. The kids shouldn't be operating in such and such. Husband, you shouldn't be operating this. You're supposed to be guiding me and leading me. 
and helping me understand these scriptures. We're supposed to be praying together. She's helping us. She's a helper to help build us up. Not build the man up in being puffed up in pride, but build the marriage up. So it can prosper the way that the Most High has called it, to, uh, called it to do so. But you can only do it through the Word. If we try to use our own words, then pride going to slip in. Even when you come in using your own words, that pride in yourself comes in, and then it's going to breed contention, as we started out with. Let's go over to the Apocrypha, chapter 7. Um, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. And we want verses 23 through 26. Go ahead. It's on you. Cast thou children, and struck them, and bow down their neck from their youth. All right. So if we have children, we're supposed to instruct them, right? And it says bow down their necks, meaning don't spare the rod. Discipline them early. And it says from their youth. Go ahead. 24. Cast thou daughters. Have a care of their body and shew not thyself cheerful, 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 cheerful toward them. Right. Show your daughters how to take care of themselves. Go ahead. Bury thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. And people don't like this. <laughs> Marry your daughter. What you mean? Because Western society, you know, they they go off into the world and they come back with somebody. Well, as we get to this next verse, you're going to see why. But it says, um, and thou shalt thou have performed a weightier matter. The weightier matter is talking about marriage. We have to show them how to be married. Because the scripture says we're supposed to teach them how to love their husbands, how to be, um, how to love their children, how to keep a home. Right? Go ahead. But give her. Give her to a man of understanding. Give her to a man of understanding. Why is that important? Well, why are we here today, for instance? She can keep the, she can keep the Sabbath. She can keep the law. Right. If she's married to a man that's not doing that, that's not understanding these scriptures, then where is he going to eventually lead her? Down to, a ditch. to the lake of fire. Right? So she has to be with a man of understanding. That's why... Even with our son Jason, we got to make sure he understands so he knows how to lead his wife according to the scriptures. Everybody goes in this world and they call it holy matrimony without the scriptures. So it's not holy and it's really not matrimony because if you don't do it the way of the Most High, then you're just fornicating with a, a license, so to speak. Right? What would you say? I just said it's matrimony. Yeah. Not holy, though. Now, go ahead. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give her not thyself over to a light woman. Right. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? You got to think alike. Right? And how are we going to think alike? You were born, well, your family's from Alabama. I'm from here. That could be two different cultures, right? But what's going to bring us together? Word. That's right. So we have to agree that this word is true. And forsake her not, but give thyself over to the light woman. You don't want a light woman. You don't want a, uh, what's the scripture called, a virtuous woman. You don't want the opposite of that. I was telling my son today, if you're going to be a cop, can you really marry a prostitute? It's not going to work. He's like, no, she's going to be in jail. Yeah. Unless y'all live in Las Vegas. Right? So you, 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 can't, you can't deal with the light woman. Just because it looks good and it's shiny and all of that, if she don't have the understanding of the most high up in her brains or willing to accept it, then no matter how cute she is, you got to let her go. 
because it's only going to cause problems down the road for you and your child. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. You who we on Jason or huh? Okay. Deuteronomy twenty two. And starting thirteen. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her, and give occasional occasion of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her. What's the what's that what's that word that y'all got for them um those um where they tell us the ones that have a reputation in the schools? Uh, Thoughts. <laughs> Stands for that hole over there. So it says here, read that again, Jason. I didn't know. I didn't know. That's new. Any man take a wife and go in unto her and take her and give occasion of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a I didn't find her to be a virgin. Go ahead. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity up to the elders of the city in the gate. Now, if you have some understanding for a virgin, the token is going to be that, that, that marriage bed sheets. Is going to show proof that she was a virgin at the time. Go ahead. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter up to this man to, to wife, and he hated her. Yeah, because he went talking bad about her, calling her a thought. Go ahead. <laughs> and lo, he hath given occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter in me. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. <gasps> and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of the city shall take that man and cheat it, uh, chastise him. Mm -hmm. He's going to get in trouble for that. You don't just get to go around calling women out of their names. In this case, this is supposed to be a wife. There's a high regard for a wife. It is not, you don't take on a woman just for pleasure. Or because she looks good. You're taking on her to take care of her and to nurture her and to love her, to cherish her, all that good stuff, as you would your daughter. Go ahead. And they shall nurse him in a hundred uh, shekels of silver and give him them unto the father of the damsel because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. And she shall be his wife. He may not put her away. So was it supposed to be forever? Yeah. Right. And then if he if he he got chastised, and then he had to make a payment for bringing this evil upon this woman, calling her out her name, etc., saying she's not what she was. There's there was a payment for it. Go ahead. And if the thing, if this dream be true, and so from the virginity she not found for the damsel. Then they shall bring out the devil to the door of the father's house. And the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought uh, holy in Israel to play the, the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put evil away from Moses. And that was the, the reverse side of it. If she was that thought over there, then guess what? She was put to death. That's another reason we should all be <laughs> thanking the Most High for Jesus Christ. Because they was getting put to death over a lot of stuff. Now we got an opportunity to repent. Uh, Uncle Cliff, let's go over to Toby. All right. Let me look it up over here because I can't see that little book. Toby, 
Tobit in the Apocrypha, chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 9. If you can handle these two for me, that would be great. In verse 9. Tobit, chapter 6, down to verse 9. And when they were to come to the rages, the angel said to the young man, Brother, today we shall lodge with Rod Rodwell, who is thy cousin. He also hath one only daughter named Sarah. I will speak for her, that she may be given thee for a wife. Mm -hmm. for, thee, for to thee that the right of her a person, seeing thou only art of her kindred. And the maid is fair and wise. Now therefore hear me, and I will speak to her father. And when we return from Rags, we will celebrate the marriage. So he's going, so Tobit's going off to get a wife, and she's fair and she's wise. She has wisdom. She was raised in the way that she should go. So he wasn't just going to get any old woman. Go ahead. For I know, uh, for I know that Ragel cannot marry her to another according to the law of Moses, but he shall be guilty of death because the right of her inheritance doth rather pertain to thee than to any other. Then the young man answered the angel, I have heard, brother Aziris, that this maid hath been given to seven men who all died in marriage or chamber. Mm -hmm. And now I am the only son of my father, and I am afraid, lest if I go in unto her, I die, as the other before. Now the wicked spirit loveth her, go ahead. which hurteth nobody but those which come unto her. Wherefore I also feel, lest I die, and bring my father's and mother's life because of me to the grave of sorrow. But they have no other son to bury, to bury them. So he's thinking about his father and mother if he goes to marry this woman. Now, if you understand the laws and what she needed to be, she needed to be a virgin. So these men that they tried to marry her off to was ran off by these evil spirits, but they didn't go into her otherwise. And if, if you read this whole chapter, you'll realize that uh, Regal is an angel. As leading Tobit to, to to go see his uh to go get his bride, so this is all ordained by the Most High. Go ahead, and he was going to say it right here. Go ahead. Then the angel said unto him, Dost thou not remember the precepts which thy father gave thee, that thou shouldest marry a wife of thine own kindred? Wherefore hear me, O my brother, for she shall be given to thee, wife, and make thou no reckoning of evil spirits, for this same night shall be given thee in marriage. All right, go ahead. And when thou shalt come into the marriage chamber, thou shalt take the ashes of perfume, and shalt lay upon them some of our, of the heart and liver of the, of the fish, and shake malt, shake mate, shalt make a smoke with it. Mm -hmm. And the devil shall smell it, and flee away, and never come again any more. But when thou shalt come to her, rise up both of you, and pray to God, which is merciful, who will have pity on you and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning, and thou shalt preserve her, and she shall go with thee. Moreover, I suppose she shall bear three bear thee children. Now when Tobit had heard these things, he loved her, and his heart was effectually joined to her. So them evil spirits was just there to run them, them, them other jokers off. Right? Because she was already ordained to be with him from the beginning. But they never were with her. Then. They were never with her in that way. Another thing that we need to realize here is that angels is not given to marriage. So there's a lot of doctrines out there that suggest that angels slept with humans, and that's not the case. So they were just there. And then we got to realize that, remember um, when the, um, the Mosai said, to the evil spirits, which one of you are going to go tell Jehoshaphat what he wanted to hear? And the evil spirit rose up and said, I'll go be a lying spirit in all of the mouths of his prophets. The Most High has them fallen angels doing his dirty work. 
in this case, keeping this woman pure because she was already fit to be with another man from the beginning, the scripture says. Let's go over to chapter 8. Did you finish? I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Tobit chapter 8, starting at verse 1. And when they had supped, they brought Tobias unto her. And as he went, he remembered the words of Raphael, and took the ash of the perfumes, and put the heart and the liver of fish thereupon, and made smoke therewith. The witch smell, when the evil spirit had smelled, he fled unto the utmost parts of Egypt, and the angel bound him. And after that, they were both shut in together. Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise. So for the first, he looks at her as a sister, not as a piece of meat, not as that thought over there. But if you have a sister, that means you have some type of respect for her. And then we should have respect for our wives. Go ahead. Sister, arise and let us pray that God would have pity on us. How many people start their marriage off with prayer? Or do we start out having babies and all of a sudden I should just marry her because I done messed up and had this baby? <laughs> right? So he's starting off with prayer. Go ahead. Then began Tobias to say, Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers, and blessed is the holy and glorious name forever. Let the heavens bless her, thee and all thy creations. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for a helper and stay. So a helper and a what? Stay. So was she ever to leave? No. No, she can she was she's a help me for the rest of the day. That's why it's, it's important who you marry. If she ain't willing to help you in the in the courting phase, if you will, probably not the right one. Right? Go ahead. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. And now, O Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. And she said with him, Amen. So she agreed, right? That's how the marriage came together. Started with prayer. Then they come together. Isn't that beautiful? That's how it's supposed to be done. That's holy matrimony. Not I met you at the club. You look fine. Hmm. I got your number and I was at your house within 24 to 48 hours. Right? Because we want it to last forever. We should have some understanding and teach our children that marriage is not, not, not in the equation. I mean, a divorce is not in the equation. If you, plan, if you plan on taking on a wife or a husband, you got to see yourself being with that person till death do you part. Now, I wish we had one of them funny Bibles. Who got an NIV? Anybody got an NIV in here? No. Yeah, pull up the NIV. I'm going to give it some kudos on this particular verse. Go to Malachi 2 and 16. Actually, let's read it. Read it in the King James first, Isaac. For the Lord, that God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. He hates putting away. Now, you got it over there? Yeah. Read it, please. The man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel, does violence to the one he should protect, says the Lord God, says the Lord Almighty. So be on your guard and do not be faithful. And do not be unfaithful. Excuse me. That's the NIV? Mm -hmm. well, that's not the right one that I wanted. But he said that the Lord God hated divorce. It says that word directly. Like, like he said over in the King James. He hated putting away. If you don't understand what putting away is, is divorce. So this is something that the Most High despises. Now, you know how they say hate is a strong word? Well, that's how much he hates it. 
And I'm going to come back to Uncle Cliff for this last set of scriptures here. Go to Colossians chapter 3. And we'll start in verse 12. Colossians chapter 3. Starting at verse 12. Put therefore as the elect of the Most High, holy and beloved. Who is the elect? Israel, right? But not only Israel. Narrow it down a little bit more. Because all of Israel is not going to believe it's true. Saints, but how many people are going to be saved, according to the scripture? The remnant. One right, the remnant. It's only a small group of people. Remember the wide road. And there are many on it. That leads to destruction. A lot of Israelites is on that road. But the narrow road, which leads to life and eternity, only few will find it. So this elect people, go ahead. As the elect of the Most High, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. So when we look at ourselves, because we're getting ready to take communion, are you holy, set aside, beloved, or can people not stand to be in your presence? Bowels of mercy, do you have mercy on end? Are you kind? Are you humble? Not just walking around here and being soft if they try to teach humility that way, but humility being I can bow down to these scriptures. If I run into something that is not right, I'm willing to change myself. I'm going to humble myself down. Uh, humble, humble, uh, humble of mind, meekness, long-suffering. There it goes again. We have patience with one another. Go ahead. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Right. Are we going to be like that one that didn't want to forgive his servants but begged the Most High for, for forgiveness? Or are we going to show forgiveness all the way around? That's the only way our marriage is going to stand if we constantly forgive, show compassion. Go ahead. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. That's the bond of perfectness. Go back and read Corinthians 13. It tells you what charity is. Go ahead. And let the peace of the Most High rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs sing, singing with grace in your hearts to the Most High. That's how the household should be. It should be let the, let the word of Christ dwell richly in all wisdom. That's what we should be talking about in our homes. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. That music that we'd like to listen to, it shouldn't be that worldly music. It should be something that's uplifting, something that's in truth, in understanding of the scriptures. Um, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Our whole lives are dedicated to the Lord. What you do individually, what you do in your marriage, what you do towards your children, what we like the, the scripture, which is a law, is to honor our parents. That's all unto the Most High. Go ahead. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. giving thanks to the Most High and the Father by Him. Go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it fit unto the Most High. As it is fit unto the Most High. This is all about Christ and how He tells us to do it. It's not submitting in, hey, woman, cook my dinner. Is submitting into this word. I'm going to help you get some understanding. Show me how to get the understanding that I need as well. Likewise, or go ahead. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. huh. That bitterness is going to lead to some pride, which is going to lead to some contention. Dwell with them as the weaker vessel. It's okay. He made you that way. 
If we didn't have no weaker vessels, we wouldn't have no compassion in the room. It would be horrible. And no matter what a man says, he needs his wife to love and treat him like a little boy sometimes and coddle him. But don't treat him like a little boy and demean him. You just want to, you know, oh, Jason, are you feeling okay today? Well, I, you know, I need some demonic. Are you feeling okay today? Mm -hmm. It's okay. Right? And just for sake of argument, children, obey your parents in all things. Not in some things. For this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Even as we're honoring our parents, we're doing it unto the Lord. And we've got to teach our children to do so. But that's part one of marriage, and we'll have another part next week. All right, praises. Amen.